A very good morning to one all present here. I'm Neha from fourth year civil engineering. It gives me immense pleasure to be standing in front of you all amongst the most esteemed personalities who have won accolades in their respective fields. I feel extremely glad to welcome you all to the day one of this two days SERB sponsored national conference on smart and energy efficient construction materials and technologies for sustainable infrastructure which is the significant need of the hour with increasing infrastructure demands. Also with the government of India allocating huge fund towards infra development, the need for construction materials in future is inevitable. Mm -hmm. to, be, uh, to begin with, I would like to call the choir for a prayer song. <laughs> Welcome the gathering. So, pleasant good morning to all. Uh, so, on behalf of the management uh, principal, uh, faculty and st staff members and students of civil engineering department, so I'm very happy uh, to stand before you to deliver the welcome address for this uh, uh, SERB sponsored national conference on uh, a smart and energy efficient construction materials and technologies for sustainable infrastructure. So, at the outset, I'd like to welcome uh, the guest of uh, today's uh, inaugural session, uh, Dr. S. Maheshwaran, so Senior Principal Scientist of uh, Structural Engineering Research Center, CSIR Chennai, so who have, uh, uh, has readily accepted our invitation uh, from the day one of uh, uh, the planning of this uh, national conference. So, so, on behalf of everyone here, I welcome Dr. S. Mageshwari. Welcome you, sir, for this conference. Uh, next, we have with us uh, Dr. Uh, Mahendra Kumar Madhavan, uh, Professor, Department of Civil Engineering of IIT Hyderabad. So, who is also uh, here with us today to deliver uh, a keynote lecture. So, on his area of expertise. So, on behalf of everyone present here, uh, I give a very warm and genial welcome to Dr. Mahendra Kumar Madhavan sir. Welcome you sir. So next we have with us uh, Mr. Nagesh uh, Kutaswami sir who is a good friend of mine and uh, he is always there with me to support me in all the activities. So he was the former uh, DGM technical of uh, Ultratech Simmons Limited and uh, he is uh, currently an independent uh, civil engineering professional. He's also a mentor, come trainer, so uh, who's always uh, uh, there to support us. So I welcome Mr. Nagesh Muttasamy sir for this conference. So he'll be there with us today for the two days. So he'll be always enjoying uh, um, to be with students always. So he said, I'll be there in your college for two days. So I'll spend time with your students. So thank you very much sir for that. So I welcome Mr. Nagesh Muttasamy sir. And uh, I welcome uh, all the participants and also the students, the faculty members, staff members present here so for this uh, wonderful event. And I hope uh, this conference will definitely uh, provide a forum to interchange and also some gain new information on uh, uh, new materials, construction materials and technologies so which are providing in the construction industry today. So with this, uh, uh, so I'm very happy to once again to welcome you all for this great event. So thank you. I 
kindly request Dr. R. Kamuda along with all the uh, all our guest of honors to grace this event by lighting the Kuttu Velakar. I kindly call upon Professor Ruby Freya to introduce our guest of honor. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce our guest of honor for this session, Dr. Maheshwaran S., Senior Principal Scientist, CSIR, SERC. So he started his career in SK Polytechnic College, then the uh, JRF in IASC Bangalore, and has been working in SERC since 1998. His areas of scientific interest are material science, nanoscience, biomimetics based concrete, eco friendly concrete, polymer based cementitious materials, etc. He has got 40 plus publications uh, in his record. He is also the recipient of Best Paper Award and Medal from Indian Building Congress during 17th Annual Convention. He is also a life member of various professional bodies like ICI, MRSI, ISCA, Vigyan Bharati India, SIS. He is also a reviewer in various technical papers and journals. I welcome you once again, sir. I kindly call upon Dr. R. Kumuda to present a memento to our guest of honor. I kindly request our guest of honor, Dr. S. Maheshwaran, to take over the session. A very good morning to all of you. Yes. Thank you. I'm getting listened. Getting back from you. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to, first of all, I would like to thank the management and then principal and uh, Dr. Kumuda HOD of Civil Engineering Department and the, my, uh, our other guests and then dear students and participants. I will, uh, good morning to all. Uh, I, I don't think I don't want to talk anything about this rather than I can go for a lecture now because uh, hopefully you are eager to listen. So the, according to the title, Smart and Energy Efficient Material. So materials are important for any, any field of interest, whatever it is, civil engineering or mechanical, whatever it is. So it is a need of the day, what is to be done? So the new kind of materials, how would you go about? So with that, can I start my lecture? Probably this may be a tutorial for you. Rather than keynote lecture, I can say it's a tutorial for you how to learn and how to go about. That's the idea, that's what I have to put in according to the lecture. Though there are various things to be taught, thought, however, I can give these kind of things for you. It will be good, good for your future studies. 
maybe you maybe take up a career in a research or in a industry or whatever it is because we are working on industrial research so this is our council of scientific and industrial research that's our parent unit we are looking more towards the industries only rather than pure pure research because we have to go for development side so accordingly what are the materials what are the things we can do that's what i have found the title of sustainable construction so sustainable materials in constructions i can this materials can be applicable for anywhere however i am confining to construction field alone okay this is an overview past experience what have i gained that i am going to talk what you are saying is my our campus it's a beautiful campus any of you visited our campus yes sir yes. facilities yes good so you would have been interacted with many people go for the next you can see yeah, fine. This is the R&D thrust area of our organization. You can find there are uh, four major events. So first one is advanced materials and fast sustainable infrastructure. That's what we are looking on there. We are looking for that. And then we have disaster mitigation. Of course, you have visited that, uh, you, our lab. That's what you would know that. What are the things we have executed. And then special and multifunctional structures. All sort of structures. Multifunctional. Okay. This may be a cooling tower, chimneys or whatever it is, because they are doing a lot of repair and rehabilitation mechanism for many other structures. And structural health monitoring, especially we have started using remote sensing, non-destructive testing and various other topics also we have covered. These are the four thrust areas, then there are expertise. Okay, so I am going to talk only about the advanced material for sustainable infrastructure. That's what the topic. We can. Uh, if you like to visit, you can visit on 26th September. Every day is an open day for us. That's the day you can visit. Just walk in. This next one. So now I move on to the presentation. I will categorize into this. First, what is materials? What are all the materials can be in mind? How do we take it into our applications? That is what important things. So we have to evaluate the material first. Before that, I will introduce. Of course, you are all very much know about the concrete technology in spite I am recollecting. I am trying to recollect what is concrete technology, some of the slides. And then identification of precursor materials. Any materials of sustainable nature if you want to work towards, we have to do some studies. So we have to identify the material first. And then this is some specialized study. I have synthesized belite cements. You know what is alite, belite, sealite, these are, these are major ingredients of cement. Okay. You have studied, no? Cement you have studied, no? So major ingredients of cement, which is the part of that belite. Because, which is low heat of hydration, it takes long time, your ultimate strength will get by using belite only. Whereas, alite is very fast and early strength. Okay? So what is the interest behind belite? I will let you know at the time of coming to the topic. And then geopolymer concrete, that is also important, completely removing the OPC, ordinary Portland cement. We are completely removing and go for different. At this point of time, fly ash is the major ingredient for the geopolymer concrete. Okay? So, um, and then another one is nano and bio materials. That is another also of interest, nano materials. Have you heard about nano? Nano scale? What is the nano scale? 10 to the power of minus 9 meter, just above atom. Atom is one angstrom, just above atom, atomic level. That level, we can work in construction. You may think, surprised, what is that huge, massive structure we are talking about, how the nano will help into this? That I will tell you later. And then biomaterials. Biological material also can help for concreting. That is, enormous studies are going on, even now. You know, enormous studies are going on, but at all at lab level. How to take into the site, how to take into the practicals, that we have to check. And then, characterization techniques. What does it mean? See, what are the materials you are thinking, or keeping in mind, it needs to be characterized, whether it is suitable or not. 
for our any application, any application or for in particular construction applications. This is the overview. So with that, each slide, there are about 111 slides including this first three. So it may take one hour for me. Okay. So probably I will finish at 10.30. Okay. Any interaction in between also, you can please interrupt and ask me. No question, if at all. So I will introduce him. So principal cement is this material is OPC, ordinary Portland cement. Supplementary cement is this material, otherwise we call it as mineral admixtures. That we are attempting because of various reasons. The next slide will come. Alternatively, other cement is this material. What we have studied so far for supplementary cement is materials are play ash, GGBS, silica fuel. These three materials are thoroughly studied, thoroughly. But utilization for like, yeah, uh, silica fuel is somewhat minimum, somewhat minimum. The reason I can tell you later. And then sustainable material, that is state of the art. That's what we are concentrated on, nano bio materials. That is something different, state of the art materials. High level, advanced level. Okay. So this is cement. What you can see here. This is water, cement is just about 15 percent, just 15 percent of entire concrete, 15 to 20 percent only, but that is playing a big role because this cement, hydrated cement, which is holding the aggregates along with the water. So this water and cement are joined together, make a paste, the paste is holding the aggregates. Then aggregates are giving the strength, correct? That's what is happening. So. We are, if we are targeting this, how much is it? Say, I have put the last line, second largest consumed material in the US. Which one is the first likely to be? Any idea? Cool. I said second largest consumed material by a human being in the universe. Which could be the, what could be the first one? Just I throw a question. Coal. Huh? Coal. 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 Water. 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 Who said? So good one. Water. Water is the first one. Including the construction, we got water. So water is the largest consumed. Second one is, imagine why I am telling here is, second one is cement. Cement is material or concrete. Such a huge requirement for the universe. So it is ultimately <coughs> creating lot of issues because we are taking lime and carbon dioxide is emitting. So equivalent, one ton of cement is normally conventionally used to say one ton of cement is equivalently one ton of carbon dioxide is emitted. So the requirement for India, the developing country, and China and other developed countries, everywhere left and right they are using, you see here, how much is required for the year 2050. So this is a data from uh, international agency. So such a huge quantity is required, future prediction. So we cannot always with the OPCs. So you have to go for alternate. Already in market, PPCs are available. You know what is PPC? Portland Pozzolana Cement. What is the Pozzolana, that word? How it comes? I'll tell you. So marching towards sustainability. If at all you want to overcome that difficulties, we have to either to reduce the cement consumption. That's what the line is getting reduced in the cement industry. We can go for some other reuse it, either CNT waste or some other plastics or whatever it is you want to use in the construction. Otherwise, recycle. Recycle, this is one, this is recycle one, play ash blocks. So this kind of things we can think of towards sustainability. The greenhouse gas into the atmosphere, because lime we are burning, garbage, calcium oxide and carbon dioxide is emitting, that's coming out, according to being 7 to 8 percent of the carbon dioxide of the universe huge quantity from construction industry. This construction industry, not only cement industry, subsequent carrying to somewhere, carrying, packing, everywhere that things are there, that is for 78 percent carbon dioxide. So there is a strong need for supplement material. We have to supplement a substitution for the cement. That may be industrial waste or byproduct. So I can openly say fly ash is not a waste product, it is a byproduct. It is an important product. The importance, how we can stress upon, we will go further. So first, 
we have to evaluate the materials. Whenever you want to think of research or any other alternate material or thing, we have to evaluate the material. What do you require? Evaluation of it is made of the day for improved and better performance for special engineering applications. So better performance, otherwise we don't go for that because energy fraction, energy fraction for recycling the waste is very, very tedious. You cannot just like that take it and put it. Fly ash also, you have to process it, make it in a powder. Then only you can use it. So wherever you are doing some extra energy, that is also keep in mind, then only you can go for additional material to be used. New year material. If at all you think some newer material, you have to work by uh, mixing, by intelligent intermixing the existing component. That's, we are thinking of composite. Cement is already, as concrete is already a composite. In spite cement is 15 to 20 percent, in that also you have to using in an intelligent manner. Then only you can come out of the successful in this one. Now, modifying, this is, this is very important. Modifying the bulk state of materials in terms of composition or microstructure. Cement is, what is the size? Any idea, cement? Approximation idea? Size of the cement? You must know all these things. Maybe 70 to 80 microns. 70 to 80 microns. So that's level you have to go down. That's what I said. Component level you have to altering the properties. Then only you can succeed. Then only you can come out of the something new. Okay? This box compound, C3S is tricalcium silicate, dicalcium silicate, tricalcium aluminate and tetracalcium aluminoferrite and gypsum for set retarder. Okay, this percent is required. In spite of this, we have to think of oxide composition also. Oxide composition is calcium oxide, silicon dioxide, Al2O3 alumina and Fe2O3, MgO, magnesium oxide, sulfate, sodium and alkali. Alkali, sodium oxide and potassium oxide. These are all the oxide composition of cement. Just if you take a cement, these are all the composition, the typical value I have given. In this, C3S is very high percentage. C3S is more. That is responsible for early gain of strength of concrete. Early gain. Whereas C2S, bilite, bilite, this is alite, this is bilite, silite. So, alite, bilite will give later distance. So, ultimate when you are designing a concrete, ultimate strength you will get by our bilite. Okay. This is a reaction, simple reaction. What you are doing is, the C3S and C2S, when adding with water, that stands for water, you are getting this phase that is called calcium silicate hydrate. Calcium silicate hydrate that is forming, that is the strength giving this. This is a kind of a gel. You would have even heard about geopolymer like that. Here also, this is a polymeric chain. That chain, CSS, calcium silicate hydrate, that holds the aggregates, gives strength. At the same time, there is a byproduct is forming here that is calcium hydroxide. That is porous in nature, that can be easily can be leached out from the concrete. You would have been seen after the concreting, you would have been seen the efflorescence on the surface. So these things are coming out. Otherwise, they are sitting in a different sort of position that I will tell later. This calcium hydroxide is the culprit for concrete deterioration. So, if you are removing this calcium hydroxide or using in a different manner, 